We all have a choice. It's a choice we make every day. It's a choice we make every moment. But it's also a choice we make over a lifetime. And the choice is to do life on your own. Just you. Counting on you, believing in you, depending on you, doing it for you. Or there's another choice. And it's been called a lot of things, but, but more and more I've been thinking of it not as you, but as you plus. Life's hard, particularly over the last couple of years. We've lived through a pandemic, political upheaval, racial conflicts, economic ups and downs, and every issue is like a lightning rod sparking conflict that threatens to polarize us from family, friends, and the very community we want to be a part of. And then on top of that, are living our own lives. Our days are full of obligations and activities. There's a few wins along the ways, but also a whole lot of pain. And I think too often we're left to wonder, is there something more? But in the middle of all the rancor and roar of life, we're not sure, is it safe to step off the treadmill to actually slow down and search for it? But what if there was a space where you could find peace? I mean, real peace. And what if there was a community where you could authentically connect with others and share life and exchange meaningful ideas? And what if there was actually enough time and grace to explore who you were meant to be in and what you were meant to do? That's possible. It's called you plus. You plus God. And you plus is a choice to live a life where you trust God. You live a life daily depending on God. You live a life sold out for God. You see, it's not just you, but you plus God. Well, today is uh, Vision Sunday. And for the last 33 years, since we began community back in 1989, when we've had a Vision Sunday, I would stand before you like I am now, and after a lot of prayer and wise counsel, I'd share the direction that we're headed as a church community. And I'd, I would point to the next hill and bravely and courageously, we would charge that hill together. And over the years, I've said things like, um, we're going to start a brand new church called Community, and we're going to help people find their way back to God. And we banded together to start Community. And three decades later, we have helped thousands and thousands of people find their way back to God. Other times I said, uh, we're going to start planning other new churches. And you got behind that vision. And together we gave birth to New Thing. And New Thing has now helped plant more than 5,000 churches in 40 countries around the world. I've at times challenged us to do something called Celebration Generosity. And you generously responded by giving almost $7 million over the last 14 years to great causes outside the walls of our church buildings. Often the message of Vision Sunday has been some form of, we can do it and you can help. Yeah, we can do it and you can help. As our directional leadership team went on our annual winter retreat to kind of pray and dream together about where God wanted us to go next to the church, there were lots of dreams, lots of ideas about what we could do next. And we thought, um, well, we could bless every person in Chicagoland by praying for them by name. Or um, we, we could be like the first century church and we could ask God to help us baptize one person on average every day, just like we read about Acts 2.47. Or we had other day ideas like, like we could help end the epidemic of loneliness in our communities by enrolling more people than ever into life-changing small groups. And I'll tell you what, I think God, I think God can use us to do all of that and more. But as myself and our leadership team reflected on all of that, it's like God's spirit gave us an unsettled feeling about it. And the unsettled feeling was not about what we could accomplish. That unsettled feeling was more about how we would accomplish it. A vision of we can do it and you can help. It just, it just didn't seem like what God had for us in this next season. I, I don't know. I, I just felt, I'm being honest here, I felt unsettled about saying, oh, here's the vision, you figure out how to contribute to it. Or here's the dream, 
You decide what role you might play to accomplish that. Or here's where we're going next, and you make sure you fit into it. I felt like God was saying, no, this year, we need a vision that is less focused on church development and more focused on people development. Rather than, yeah, we can do it and you can help. Instead, the vision should be, you can do it and we can help. You can do it and we can help. And so instead of starting with a big dream and a bold vision, this year, we start with you. You are the vision. What do you think about that? What if the objective and key result of this church for the next year or two was just solely focused on helping you to become a disciple of Jesus? What if our singular focus was to start with individual people and a conviction that God has put a dream inside you and we can help you live it out to help you make the choice to live you plus God? A guy we know in the Bible by the name of Peter chose a you plus life. It started as he got to know Jesus and over time he was so profoundly changed by becoming a disciple that he wanted it for everyone he met. Here's how he expressed that desire in his writings. May the grace and peace be yours in ever increasing measure through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. And the word he chooses for knowledge is, is, a, is a word, Greek word, epigenosis. And this is the kind of knowledge, yes, it does mean information and facts, but it goes way beyond just information and facts. It means to know someone in a personal, intimate way. Actually, the same word, epigenosis, it would also be used to describe a sexual relationship between a husband and a wife. That's you plus life. That you plus life is an intimate, personal, relational knowing of God. That's you plus. I am tired. I feel lied to. I feel alone. Broken. I thought I would figure this out. Cross the finish line. Find the truth, but I keep getting buried deeper. I don't know where to go. I can't slow down. I feel like I have to be Perfect. Always on. Always moving. Why, Why is it, is it so, so loud? loud? <sighs> there has to be a way to move through it. Overcome this slump. Put my trust in something greater. greater. Connection. Hope. Peace. Peace. I desperately need a place where I can slow down. A space to call home. A home that allows me time to process. To rest. To discover who, who I'm, I'm meant, meant to be. be. We were never meant to do life on our own. So I, I, I will be a part of something greater. greater. My name is Kat Petrovich. I've uh, been coming to community for about three years now. A friend brought me and I absolutely loved it from the first day I went. My name is Monica. I'm from Chicago and I've been attending community for about a year now. And which location do you attend? I usually go online okay. and then see you. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> no, 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 it's great. <laughs> My name is Rick, uh, married to Alinda, and uh, we've been going to community since, uh, I guess, probably about four or five years ago. And little inside scoop, you guys may not know this, but actually Rick and I are in the same small group. We are, yeah. 
So he had a lot of fun. He gets me more than once a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, you're going to share your stories. I think one of the things we're going to discover along the way is um, that we would kind of call each of your stories in different ways, kind of a you plus story. And Jesus said, I came to give you life and life to the full. What I see is that each of you are living this kind of a you plus life and have kind of left behind going, I'm not just doing this on my own. It's not just you, not just me on my own. I actually have a very special journey that happened about four years ago. It was the worst and best time of my life. And in that time, God saved me and now I'm living life to the fullest in every way possible. I feel like it's, it's been a journey. You know, I really feel, you know, particularly called to our special needs community and wanting to just love them. There are things that I could not control. I mean, it's certainly God and his fingerprints are all over this. I felt like I was doing everything on my own. I was living for me and then I was just missing something and I had like an empty void. Now I feel like I can do anything through with God because he's always on my side. And I mean, if God is for me, then who can be against me, you know? Yeah. Thanks. Amen. Yeah. The way we're framing this U plus is like, yeah, U plus God, U plus, you know, this church community, we can do this together. U plus the difference we're supposed to make in the world. What we're going to discover is it's not just something that happened with us three, or I'd include myself in that and the four of us, but actually this, this is something that happened with the very first followers uh, in the New Testament who called themselves Christians. It really was a U plus kind of life. When we first meet Peter, he's not even Peter. His name is Simon. But Jesus does something remarkable. He not only changes his name, but also changes his identity. He changes how Peter views himself and, and looks at himself. See, Peter was just a struggling fisherman, trying to make ends meet, hoping to feed his family, just depending on you. And that's when his brother Andrew introduces him to Jesus. The Gospels tell us, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said. Now, it's hard for us in 2022 to understand just what a very big deal this invitation was. You see, Jesus was a rabbi, a teacher, someone that others looked to for knowledge about God. Simon was working class, didn't have the schooling or education, even to be in the same room with Jesus. And now here Jesus is saying, come follow me. Jesus handpicked Simon to be an apprentice, to invest in him, to teach him. It, it was an incredible honor. And it began to change how Peter saw himself. And check out what Jesus does next. Looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, your name is Simon, son of John, but you'll be called Peter. Simon was his name. So this was a strange kind of meet and greet to be told by Jesus that his new name would be Peter. I'm imagining him kind of, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Especially considering the name Peter means rock. I mean, Simon was too emotional, too impulsively worthy of such a name. In fact, when, when, when Jesus tried to wash his feet, he refused to allow his master to even stoop down. But the, then Jesus said, if I don't wash you, you won't have any place with me. And suddenly he wanted a full body bath. When the soldiers came to arrest Jesus, he was the guy who drew his sword to cut off a guy's ear. I'm not sure what the plan was after that. But then after Jesus' arrest, all the ear-cutting bravado vanished. To avoid being arrested himself, he denied even knowing Jesus, not once, not twice, but three times. So his instability kind of begs the question, why did Jesus call such an unstable person rock? Pre-Jesus Simon was this rash, brash fisherman whose mouth and choices got him into trouble. Post-Jesus Simon, he did indeed become Peter, the rock. Now, not immediately. It was a process. It took time. But over time, he became a bedrock leader of the early church, healer of the sick, author of two New Testament books, fearless unto death. So why did Jesus call an unstable person rock? Because Jesus makes us what we're not. Jesus changes our identity. Moving to Chicago, it was really hard to adjust. You know, I felt pretty isolated. I was pretty sad. I, it was really hard to make friends too because all of our classes were online and so we were all isolated from each other. You know, I just had like an empty void, like, you know, in my stomach and 
It's just, it's just like I was just really lonely. I, I just felt like I need, like I didn't have any friends or any family. So I, I, I essentially just needed someone to be by my side. Last summer in May, I got struck by a vehicle. It was a four-way stop and I didn't think that they would come and they came at such a high speed. The pain that I felt the next day was really bad, but within one week I was recovered. I realized that my, my life was worth being saved. So I realized that I have a purpose in life from God. So I just felt like a really blessed and grateful person after that day. After that, I, I started to go to church like every Sunday because I wanted to learn more. And I started reading the Bible as well, like in my own time. And it wasn't until I like, like uh, till the end of the year when I got into like the baptism classes and Explore and uh, Alpha. And I met so many, so many sweet people. And we had so many great conversations. And it was so, it was so nice to like, you know, be able to be in a space where you're not judged and you can just say whatever you want. It definitely brought me a lot closer to God. I have decided to commit my life to Jesus Christ and I am going to be baptized today. I feel like this will change everything for me for the better. And it was, my life is already changing for the better because I already feel like I'm, I have a really close relationship with God. So I feel like this is right for me and I've never been more ready. Monica, you're getting baptized today, which is so awesome. I just feel like I need to high yes. five you there. Yeah, Here we go. Yes. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I think that's one of those decisions, and I tell people this, you're, you will never regret. It becomes kind of this place where you have a new identity, like, oh, this is who I've always been. I'm, I am fundamentally a child of God, a daughter of God. That's who I am at, at the kind of at the core. I was actually at camp and we had a calling and so I got baptized. Was this, as a, was this as a kid or as an adult? As a kid. Oh, okay. Yep. So I got baptized in the, uh, in the camp pool. I remember that. I can't put a day on it. I can't put, you know, a specific marker on it, but it did change me for, for sure. I was baptized when I was a child. Okay. Um, and I've actually, it's really interesting that you said you went to a baptism class and that really, that, that interests me. I know you, you get baptized when you choose God. Well, I've always chosen God. So does that mean that, is it common for people to get baptized twice? If I get baptized again, is that really telling God that I really, really, really <laughs> like you? I mean, like, just redo. <laughs> yeah. So um, I would love to actually look into that baptism class because I do know that God is my Savior. Right. Um, so maybe getting baptized again is something to think about. Well, I love the stories that people share when they get baptized that day. Yeah. You know, and the band sort of ramps up and it just, it's all of a sudden, it's a celebration. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an opportunity for you to continue to share what's important to you. One of the great surprises for Peter was that he didn't have to go on this you plus journey alone. Jesus created for him a community of disciples. And again, the gospels give us the names of this community of people who discovered how to live you plus. First, there was Peter, who without a question, he's the guy we can identify with. One minute he's walking on water by faith and the next he's sinking in doubt a bold, charismatic leader, but often impulsive and too emotional. And Andrew, a fisherman who introduced his brother Peter to Jesus. He spent much of his time keeping his more famous sibling out of trouble. James and John, also called Sons of Thunder. Now you don't get a nickname like that for no reason. They were tough guys, amazing, colorful characters. They wouldn't back away from a confrontation. In fact, they might even look for one. They were aggressive, often very insensitive. Philip, Independent, wanted to think for himself, had his own ideas. Bartholomew, distant, skeptical, stuff had to be proven to him. Matthew, tax collector, prone to greed. If you weren't paying attention, he'd take you for every dime you had. Thomas, pessimistic, doubter. Faith did not come naturally. James, known as James the Less, quiet, back of the room, wallflower. <laughs> so quiet, he's silent in scripture. Simon the Zealot, he was all or nothing, totally in or couldn't be counted on at all. Judas, brother of James, strong, silent type. He must have hung out with the other James, James the less. We don't hear a word from either of them in the Bible. And Judas Iscariot, loved money even more than people and betrayed Jesus with a kiss. If this team had been drafted, you'd give the draft an F. It was definitely not championship material. But Jesus took this group of working class, sin prone, cynical group of contrarians and created a community. They lived for each other. 
and they lived and died for Jesus. 10 of the 12 died as martyrs. And together, the Bible says, they turned the world upside down. But before I came to Community Christian, I really felt like there was something missing. I felt like I didn't have an overall idea of what I wanted in my life. And I didn't know this, but it was God that was missing in my life. Well, my first nursing job, I worked at Metro South Medical Center in Blue Island. And the stress that I felt from that job was very high. And the longer I was there, the worse the stress and the anxiety got to the point where I began to have panic attacks. I remember just being completely terrified. And as a nurse and a paramedic, I had no idea what it was. The first few weeks I went to the ER at least twice, maybe three times. They did an EKG, they did a chest X-ray. Everything was normal. I was looking for something physical to be wrong with me to explain all of my symptoms. I feel like God brought my life to a, a screeching halt. And in that pain and suffering and terror, I had nowhere else to look but up. I was able to, out of fear, get rid of every bad habit I ever had and to slowly rebuild my life. Once I realized that I was coping with alcohol, I stopped drinking. I went gluten and dairy free. I began to go to the gym regularly for the first time in my life. I began writing every day. I began um, going to church every week. Through my pain and suffering, God changed me into who I've always wanted to become. And now I live every day with God at my side. About six months ago, I went online after they mentioned the small groups in service. And I looked online and I found Rooted. It was about the third week in that I really just felt like these were, the, these were my people. And I, I get such joy being around them. And I was so happy to hear that they felt the same because even when Rooted ended, we still all get together every week and we really enjoy being around each other. We learn from each other's strengths and weaknesses. To be around God-loving people is just an amazing experience, and I'm blessed to be part of such an amazing group. I love our small group. I mean, you know, the small group means everything. Somebody that we lean on and that we talk to and we sharpen, um, we pray for each other. I mean, it's just, it's incredible how much that small group just built into you, and it sounds like you've found that with that rooted group, and just to continue to see it go after it was supposed to end, mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's a community. Monica, have you, have you got to experience any of that yet? Yeah, so I was an alpha, and I also was an explorer, like explore initially, then alpha after. And I'm actually looking to join Rooted after, and I think the signups are coming this fall, so I'm really <laughs> excited for that. Also allowed me to meet so many great people, and that has also been a huge factor in uh, my journey to find my faith. So um, I'm just really grateful and blessed. Being with this group just revives me. I feel like like it's the U plus. I absolutely love that because with my group, like all of our strength is almost combined with each other. And it's just, it's an amazing force and I'm blessed to be a part of it. The closer Peter follows Jesus, the more he becomes the best version of himself. It's U plus. And Jesus not only changes his identity, creates for him a community, but he also reveals his destiny. The news of Jesus' death and now his resurrection begins to spread. A huge, growing crowd starts to form. The people have questions. They all want answers. And Peter, he remembers the words of Jesus regarding his identity. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not overcome it. The eyes of the other ten from his community are all looking to Peter. This is his moment. Peter looks down and his feet are moving to the front of the crowd. He's gonna to explain to this crowd who Jesus is and what is happening. He begins by quoting scripture and telling the story of how Jesus' resurrection defeated the power of death and launched God's cosmic redemption plan. And then Peter challenges them to become disciples to not do life just relying on you. Peter says to the crowd, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. And as he taught, people 
leaned in to listen. Their hearts were moved to action. And it says, those who accepted his message were baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. This man with a new name and a, a community with a cause, he launched a global movement called the church. A, a simple fisherman living a life that would impact generations and generations and generations to come. Peter, once Simon, shows us what it looks like to take on a new identity in Jesus to accept a new name as a son or daughter of God. Peter shows us what it looks like to not do life on our own but to be surrounded by people who help you become the best version of yourself. And Peter shows us what it looks like to have Jesus reveal our destiny. <laughs> this stubborn, at times disobedient disciple who walked with Jesus went from being an antagonist to an apostle. And on his journey with Jesus, Peter found his you plus life. My wife, Alinda, um, we had a friend that was going through just some difficult times, and so uh, she wanted to attend uh, community with her friend and be there to support her. That's how we really found community. You know, there were several young life kids that attended, and uh, so we decided to uh, make community our home. Young Life is a Christian organization that reaches the high school kids, and so I specifically work with our Capernaum program, which falls under Young Life, and it's for our special needs kids. You know, I've been involved with our Young Life organization for close to 15 years, and so my heart is just out for that special needs group. I have just seen the need for what does, you know, after Capernaum look like for our young adults with special needs. A friend of mine, she was hired by an organization over in Holland, Michigan. The name of the organization is called Benjamin's Hope. And so I talked with Krista, the founder. She created um, a residency for special needs. Fast forward, I'm sitting in the Exponential uh, Conference back in November 2021. James Meeks is our closing speaker, and he just starts talking about how you don't have to have the perfect building, you don't have to have the perfect funds, you don't have to perfect the perfect board. You know, you just need to be available. And so I really felt that calling at that time. All of a sudden, my hand's getting raised, and they're starting to, you know, pray for me and others in the congregation that wanted to uh, plant a church. So I quickly run home afterwards and I tell my wife, I'm like, hey, I think I've sort of changed things up here a little bit. You know, uh, it's still going to be a Benjamin's Hope. It's still going to be special needs residency, but I want to plant a church and I want to wrap it with special needs residency around it. I'm sitting down with my friend on a, on a Wednesday afternoon and I tell my friend, I said, you know, uh, everything I have, I give to God. Everything he's blessed me with, I give back. But I don't give them my job. That's still mine. I still want it. I still have control over it. Don't touch it. Don't touch my retirement. And don't touch my health insurance. The day later, 24 hours later, that was all taken away. I lost my job. And... I didn't have that anymore. So... I can see God smiling down. You don't need any of that just need me. I texted my small group. Hey, I'm 100% kingdom work. I've got no more work to take care of. No more worrying. Um, man, I'm just all, I'm focused. Our tagline, helping people find their way back to God, I think, you know, that that's what I want to do. I want to help people find their way back to God. Rick, it's, it's been a a pleasure and just, I mean, just a lot of fun to actually have a front row seat to see God at work in your life over the last few years. When when I got the, the text from you about actually doing this, I was with a gentleman and we were talking about buildings and property. And he shared with me a, a picture of the property and he's like, I think this is maybe where, where this vision of yours can land. I'm excited, I really am, for what, you know, the future holds. To me, when I see that community, it's a picture of what the kingdom of heaven looks like. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I see. I think what you're doing is amazing, and I just I just think that like God works through people, and He's clearly working through you, and that's just amazing. And I really we do need to get together because I need to hear like how this is gonna end up because I like that just <laughs> that's just so amazing, and 
you know, that actually gives me hope. He's using you mm -hmm. and he's working through you. The fact that you are aware of that is just such a blessing. And so just a lot of trust and faith and <laughs> I have no doubt that he's leading you exactly where you need to be. Yeah. We all have a choice. And it's a choice we make every day. It's a choice we make every moment. But it's also a choice we make over a lifetime. And the choice is to do life on your own. Just you. Or you plus God. Maybe you recognize some of your own story and Monica's story. That God is going out of his way to get your attention. And that it's time to stop living a you only life and to start living a you plus life, you plus God. And you mark that commitment to being a disciple of Jesus by being baptized. Maybe that's the next step for you. Or maybe your journey has been like cats. It wasn't all at once, but over time, a year or two or more of pain and hurt and realizing you cannot do this on your own. You need help. You need others. You need a community of people to support you and encourage you in this you plus life. Maybe the next step for you is a small group, an alpha group or a rooted group. You just know if you keep trying to do this on your own, you're gonna keep getting what you got. Or maybe what you're looking to find is a greater purpose or calling, like, like Rick found. Maybe as Rick was talking and got emotional, you realized there is nothing in your life you feel that passionate about and you're looking for purpose. That's what this U plus vision is all about. A life that the apostle Peter found through an increasing knowledge of God and Jesus. The Greek word for knowledge, you remember? Epigenosis, an intimate, personal, relational knowing of God. That's U plus. And the singular vision for this coming year at community, it, it's not we can do it and you can help. Instead, it's you can do it and we want to help. The big dream, the bold vision that we have this year is you. The number one objective and key result for this next year is to solely focus on helping you to become a disciple of Jesus. And I want you to know, I'm really convicted that, that God is saying that the vision this year should not be focused so much on church development, but on people development, on you. Now, here's just a hint at what's coming this fall. We want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. And we want to help you take your next step. Now, in, in a large church like ours with multiple expressions, we know this will mean having not just hundreds, but perhaps thousands of one-on-one -on -one discipleship conversations. And we're not going to force you or cajole you, but we want to ask you, how do you want to grow spiritually? And how can we help you do it? We're here to help you make the choice to live you plus God. Because if you're living a you plus life, and I'm living this you plus life, and each of us are living this U plus life, we'll become a community of people where God is powerfully at work. And, and that will transform our friendships and our families. It'll transform where we live and work and where we play. It'll transform our communities. And if each of us make a daily choice to live U plus God, that's the stuff that changes the world. Let it start with you plus. Let's pray. Father God, in the very beginning, you even uh, in your word, it said it's not good for man to be alone. It's not good for us to try to do it on our own. And in the person of Jesus, you came near to show us how to live life. And through the power of your spirit, you said you dwell in us and guide us and direct us. Lord, I want to pray for every person here. Help us to turn our backs on that you only life, just counting on, depending on living for you, but instead that we do life with you, you plus. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.